Um, let's start, everybody. This is the Thursday, October 19th, uh, regular Glencoe Village Board meeting. Um, I'll call the meeting to order. Let's have a roll call, please. Trustee Hallwax. Here. Trustee Listener. Here. Trustee Mealopolis. Here. Trustee Underdunk. Here. Trustee Rubin. Here. Trustee Scott. Here. And President Rowan. Here. Uh, we are live streaming this meeting and have posted the links to the live stream on the Village's social media pages. We'll make the recording available on the Village's YouTube channel following the conclusion of tonight's meeting. This is the first meeting of the Village Board since uh, Hamas's horrific terrorist attack on Israel on October 7th. Shortly after the attack, the Village issued a statement condemning Hamas's murderous program and stating that we stand with Israel and the innocent victims. We po posted the statement on the Village's webpage and on the Village's so social media outlet outlets. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's on the screen behind us tonight. Before we start tonight's meeting, I want to talk briefly about why the Village decided it was necessary and proper to weigh in. All of us on the Village Board have political, personal political views on national and international issues. But when we presented ourselves to the caucus and the voters, we weren't asked about those views, and they were not why we were chosen. The village is a local government. We focus on important local issues, and we don't have a foreign policy. So ordinarily, we are reluctant to make statements about international issues. This terrible event is an exception. As our village manager, Phil Corrali, stressed to me, for a great many residents in Glencoe, this brazenly anti-Semitic murder spree is personal. We're hurting, and we're entitled to expect, expect our local government to stand up for us, so we stood up. This is not a time, we think, for equivocation. There are not two legitimate sides. The Hamas government sent henchmen to kill and kidnap Jews, and they've made it clear that they're proud of their atrocities and that they'll keep on killing and taking hostages until all the Jews are gone or until Israel stops them. In these circumstances, we're proud to join President Biden, Governor Pritzker, Congressman Schneider, and many of our neighboring communities in condemning Hamas's murderous anti-Semitic terrorism, in standing with Israel, and in offering our condolences to the innocent victims. One more thing. Late this afternoon, the village learned that signs depicting the names and images of some Gaza hostages were posted to several of the light posts in our uptown business district. Village ordinances prohibit individuals from posting signs in the public right away. All signs are prohibited. Under the First Amendment, the village cannot permit signs we like and take down signs we don't like. So although we are sympathetic to the sentiment expressed on those signs, and I just set forth the village's position, and it's up on the screen, in accordance with our ordinances, we've removed the signs. For anyone who wants to speak or educate on that or any other important issue, we encourage you to use other available forums. Individual signs are not allowed in the public right of way. Okay, the next item on the agenda, regular item, is consideration of minutes. Um, we've circulated minutes for the Committee of the Whole meeting on September 21st, 2023, and the Board of Trustees regular meeting on September 21st, 2023. They've been circulated. Um, uh, is there anyone that wants to make a correction or comment? And if not, is there a motion to approve them? So moved. There. All in favor? Aye. The motion carries. The minutes are approved. Um, because we have a unique celebration tonight, as we swear in not only a new public safety officer, but our new public safety director, there are a lot of extra people in the room, um, and they're eager for us to get to what, from their point of view, is the main event. So given that, I would ask that there be a motion to move the swearings in for Public Safety Director Sean Lochran, 
and Public Safety Officer Tyler Baisley from the Village Manager's Report, which is Item 5A1, to, to now, Item 2. Uh, is there such a motion? Is that, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. The motion carries. So let's get the swearing in. Good evening. Ooh, hello. That's more than I thought. I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a different approach than I normally do. Um, I'm Phil Corrali. Uh, village manager and village clerk for the village of Glencoe um, and I have the privilege of swearing in officers uh, to our public safety department. Um, normally uh, I sit behind the dais, the public safety director speaks from the podium, um, but in that we're swearing a new public safety director in, I'm taking a little bit of a different approach this time. Um, as I mentioned, uh, it is my honor and privilege to administer the oath of office tonight to the Village of Glencoe's new Director of Public Safety, Sean Lochran. Director Lochran was selected following a nationwide recruitment process which resulted in over 60 candidates from 15 states and officially undertook his duties as Director on Thursday, October 5th, two weeks ago today. I'm proud that over 50 members of our community and of the Public Safety Department participated in the extensive recruitment vetting process. Director Lochran is joined tonight by members of the Public Safety Department, colleagues, friends, uh, and most importantly, his family, including his wife Kathleen and children Finn and Lily. While we're deeply proud that he's joined our team, I have no doubt there's no one in the room tonight that's more proud than his wife and children. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for supporting him, loaning him to us, and being the rock that supports the work that he will undertake here in Glencoe. Director Lochran comes to Glencoe with an unwavering dedication to public safety. A highly decorated 27-year veteran of the Chicago Police Department, Director Lochran recently retired from the CPD. His last role, Deputy Chief, Office of the First Deputy Superintendent, tasked him with overall command of all large-scale events, crisis incidents, and events requiring a media response in the city of Chicago. During his career, the positions and the vast responsibilities that came with those positions ran the gamut and placed him in leadership roles ranging from public education and information to counterterrorism. Director Lochran's extensive leadership experience and public safety knowledge goes well beyond his various professional roles. He served as an instructor at the CPD Training Academy and graduated from the FBI's Nat National Academy. He holds a Master of Public Safety Administration degree from Lewis University and a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Illinois. He's on the executive board for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Chicago and is a Boy Scouts of America adult leader. It's no small task that he undertakes here in Glencoe as he assumes command of our unique cross-trained public safety department. He's already begun to make an impact on the department and has underscored his commitment to the department's vision, which is to provide the highest level of public safety services to all in cooperation with the community, in a partnership of equality and integrity, in a spirit of unity and mutual trust. I've no doubt Sean will lead our department honorably and will serve our community with a commitment to service above all else, carrying forward our department's traditions of safety, inclusion, and excellence. He cares deeply that a community should be served by committed, ethical, and approachable public safety professionals. And just as a unique aside, he shared during his interview that because of the traditions of his family, where well over a dozen of his relatives have served or are serving as either a police officer or firefighter. Sean tested and was placed on the eligibility list for both the Chicago Police and Fire Departments. Late the night before the academies were to begin, he selected the Police Academy, but has always underscored a respect and commitment to both police and fire service, something that I believe will serve him very well here in Glencoe. So I'd like to ask Sean and his family to come forward, um, and I will administer the oath.
So I've been afforded an opportunity to say a few words. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. President, the Village Board of Trustees, uh, Village Manager Crowley, members of the public, close friends, Kathleen, Finn, Lillian, and members of the Public Safety Department. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for this opportunity to speak briefly, uh, and especially thank you for your public trust. Uh, as a side note, my wife has accused me of this being a long play of not taking her out for our 21st wedding anniversary, which is tonight. <laughs> sort of true. <laughs> so, um, I, as noted, I came here by way of a vigorous and comprehensive selection process. It actually ended, the last step ended in this very room uh, with an open interview and an invitation of all members sworn and non-sworn of the Public Safety Department uh, for the final uh, candidates. No pressure. Um, in discussing with co-workers, friends, retirees, no one I know could point to a selection process that was outlined like that. Uh, a government asking for the buy-in of those personnel and that are most directly impacted, asking for that trust and then the village trusting those personnel in advance and asking who they would like as their department head. In being chosen, you've given me that tremendous trust. I will work both day and night to continue to maintain that trust, the trust of the village, the trust of our residents, and especially the trust of our department members. The uniformed service is critically important to our society. In times of crisis, a person in uniform can stand as a beacon of hope. We see that now, night, right now, as terrorist attacks overseas have made residents fearful in Glencoe. And those residents in Glencoe have turned to us and repeatedly expressed their comfort in seeing just our personnel merely present at locations, at places of worship, at public events and schools. Repeatedly, I have received that in phone calls and in emails. There is a level of pride, respect, and expectation we have of our men and women that wear the uniform, regardless of profession. In law enforcement, fire service, emergency medical services, and the military, that is also coupled with an oath. When the two are combined, the public holds tremendous expectation of service and dedication, and rightfully so. 27 years ago, when I put on another uniform, in addition to all the other right reasons to wear it, it had a lot to do with hero worship. This is no different but I never dreamed I would have the opportunities afforded to me through the profession. An education, a wife who I met on the job as a sergeant in the department, my kids, plenty of laughs, and the opportunity to help. The doors were opened and I had the chance to meet so many wonderful people, both on and off the job, and some are here tonight. But I especially never dreamed I would find myself here with the opportunity to serve as the head of an organization that combines EMS, fire, and police into one incredible whole. Ladies and gentlemen, you have given me a dream, or made a dream come true. And basically, a big kid afforded this opportunity who could not be more honored to wear the uniform of Glencoe Public Safety. Thank you very much. And now there's a part two. So, you know, fun fact, I'm also the village marshal. Oh, not yet. Oh, almost. Oh, sorry. Anyway, I said, oh, I said, I jumped, uh, I spoke too soon. So I have, I have a wonderful opportunity to introduce to the village, uh, to the board as well, uh, and to the public as, as a greater whole, um, our newest public safety officer, Tyler Basley. Uh, Tyler is joined by his wife, Gabriella. Um, Aubrey, Ryder, Rick, and Leslie. 28-year-old Tyler comes to us with five years of a very unique law enforcement experience prior to coming here under his belt. After growing up in Bartlett, Illinois and attending Bartlett High School, he attended the College of DuPage, earning his associate degree in business, which is just long enough to realize you do not want to go into business. 
Uh, he then soon joined the Franklin Police Department at the young age of 22 years of age, and he served honorably for three years. After then, he found an online ad where uh, Mazan, Illinois, it's pronounced like Amazon, Mazan, Illinois, was looking for a new chief of police. At age 25, he undertook that position. Understanding it is a one-man operation in a very small town, you are it. And in the event he needed help, it was only 20 minutes away. So if you can imagine that, probably no one in this room has ever faced a challenge like that. Any call for service, regardless of time, he was it. Middle of the night, early in the morning, he was it. That unique challenge, as I mentioned, no one in this room has ever faced. And we are absolutely lucky that he then found that Glencoe was hiring. To Tyler, on behalf of the Glencoe Department of Public Safety, I say thank you for answering the call. It is a noble profession that you are continuing, as you no doubt know. To Gabriella, on behalf of the Glencoe Department of Public Safety, I say thank you for supporting me. Would you please step forward? stick around, but um, I, I just want to say on behalf of the Village Board and the Village, we are so proud of our, the men and women who are our public safety officers. Um, we feel we have the best and the brightest here. Um, we feel safe. We feel that we have our back. <coughs> our public safety officers show us that every I just want to put out uh, one thing that they've demonstrated. I grew up here. I've lived here almost my whole life. In Glencoe, the public safety officer is your friend. Um, and we are, you know, folks that have been here have shown that day in, day out, year in, year out. And we're positive that our new hires will do the same thing and will make us proud. So welcome. Thank you. Um, if you want to make the oldsters, uh, the old timers happy, you'll recognize that the business district is uptown, not downtown. Um, and welcome to Okay, I think there's cake somewhere. You're, you're, and, you're and, allowed and to, you're allowed to like go get cake. So uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment. This portion of the meeting allows for those in attendance to address the board regarding non-agenda items. I'll ask that public comment on agenda items be provided when we reach that item on the agenda. 
There are some rules for our, our public comment. All comments are limited to three minutes. We time them and we'll tell you when you have to stop talking. And in the interest of time, the total public comments on non-agenda items is limited to 15 minutes. So with that, are there any non-agenda item public comments? Yes, sir. Uh, come on up, tell us who you are. You can use the microphone. So I'd like to, uh, my name is Mark Stern. I've lived in Glencoe for about 45 years. Not as long as I have. True. And I'm also a, a big fan of the police department. Um, I came here uh, until I heard Mr. Elrod's comments. I was quite upset and disturbed. Um, however, I'll still make my comments, but I, I definitely appreciate everything you've said. And um, it's, it's tempered my anxiety and um, uncomfortableness. So I've written this, but I've tempered my comments. Kidnap signs uh, not placed by anyone I know <clears throat> Referring to kidnapped Israelis and Americans were taken down almost immediately by a village official who was told by the village president no signage allowed on lampposts. 32 Americans were viciously murdered by terrorists and at least 15 Americans were cruelly, cruelly taken. Even if the city council uh, has signage requirements. Um, Americans are involved here also. And when terrorists abduct Americans and kill Americans, I believe special circumstances exist. And I also think <coughs> From what I know, there's a bit of a double standard, too. I don't think it's too polarizing to have signs in the village when it comes to Americans murdered or Americans abducted. I don't think it is polarizing. And in July 2020, most of you know that there were chalk drawings defacing the village right down here in downtown Glencoe. Uh, the, the facings, some of them were quite vile. Uh, there were BLM signage, there was white privilege signage, and there were some vile anti-Semitic signage. Uh, apparently, this did not upset the sensibilities of the city council. And when a village police officer asked one of the participants what he was doing, and he was saying, I'm signing BLM signage, the police officer said, carry on, carry on. And there is an article in the Tribune verifying this, because I looked it up today, July 20th, 2020. So I guess my question to Glencoe is, where is the moral compass when signs supporting cruelly abducted Americans are not to be displayed in public? Thank you. Bruce Edelson, resident of Blanco. What he said was said very well, so I'm not going to repeat it in any fashion. But not only is there a double standard that morally is wrong, it's not something we should be proud of. We should absolutely be proud of the men and women who are in public safety who were just installed today. 
but how we direct them needs to have that moral compass. My ad to it is purely, because I can't say anything better, is a legal one, which is federal courts have been very clear that while you might have prosecutorial discretion and executive discretion to exercise it disparately based on different groups, racially, religiously, or otherwise, is not allowed. And therefore, in how Blanco deals with it, I'm hopeful that it will keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, you know, instead of having the, I understand the point, um, but I respectfully disagree with the suggestion that we have made different content distinctions. We have not. And, I'll, and if I could ask our, our village attorney, um, just take a, a two minutes to explain the difference as to, and uh, let me say also, most of the trustees that you're looking at were not here in 2020. You know, so, but even if we had them, the situations are completely different, not based on content. Now let's speak all around 20 minutes. I, I think that that's, it's important, President Rowan, and thank you for the opportunity. And um, I'm addressing my comments to my client, the Village Board, but um, you are um, all welcome to understand and appreciate where this comes from as a matter of law. And this is a legal issue. We're talking about the First Amendment, and we're talking about the village creation of a public forum or the prohibition of the creation of a public forum. Village right of way, village hall, village owned property can be declared or determined to be a public forum. That's the choice of the policymaker and the board. But you must know.
Good news is that the village's finances are healthy. Uh, at Tuesday's finance committee meeting, the committee discussed the monthly financial reports for the month of September. As of the end of August, uh, our general revenue uh, performance for a uh, number of the village's revenue sources exceeded both our monthly budgeted targets and our prior year receipts, including our places for eating taxes and parking fees. Uh, we discussed the fact that, uh, in case you all don't know it, your property tax bill is online and will soon be in your mailbox. Um, from the village's perspective, this is a good thing because that means that our property taxes will start to come in from the county, uh, hopefully later this month and in early November. Uh, water fund revenues have dipped slightly due to the end of irrigation season. <coughs> Uh, on the other hand, the golf club continues to perform magnificently and exceeded its revenue budget uh, due to a large number of rounds played. Uh, the expenditures in all the funds are within our budgetary targets, and uh, although we did discuss the fact that there were a number of increases in costs of supplies and services, as well as in delays and delivery of vehicles and equipment that continue to impact our current year budget and that are expected to carry into 2024, uh, which essentially means stuff we didn't get this year, we'll get next year, and then we'll pay for it next year and we will adjust our budgets accordingly. Uh, the committee also discussed the current progress of this year's capital plan, uh, which included, again, several changes because of uh, changes in their targeted completion dates and therefore the dates that will be required to pay for things. Uh, we also reviewed the property tax levy estimate, which uh, includes an inflation factor of 5%. This has previously been discussed at some of our meetings. A formal public hearing will take place to review the proposed tax levy at next month's board meeting on November 16th. Uh, last, the committee discussed our village's five-year financial forecast which includes five years of financial projections for the village's main operating funds and an in-depth analysis on the village's major revenue and expenditure categories, including capital, and recurring themes in the forecast. Won't surprise anybody that's been listening to me drone on at these things, uh, is that uh, we're going to continue to be hit with inflation. We're going to be continuing to have rising costs for infrastructure investments. We're going to continue to deal with challenges as to when things are even available to us and are able to be delivered. Um, please join us at the next Finance Committee, which is on Tuesday the 14th of November, when there will be a full discussion of our draft budget. Thank you for that report. Next we have a report on the Plan Commission um, by our Plan Commission. Representative, uh, Trustee Wilson. Thank you. In September, the Plan Commission continued the comprehensive plan process with the discussion of the downtown small area study. Uh, the Commission discussed what the village would like to see if and when redevelopment were to occur in the downtown area. The Commission agreed that downtown should encourage and possibly incentivize new residential units downtown 
and then recognize that current height and parking limitations may be problematic for some of this uh, potential development. Conversations were centered on whether allowing a fourth floor would be appropriate in at least some parts of the downtown, and commissioners did express an openness to this idea, provided that the development would be architecturally appropriate, not out of character for the village. Uh, the commissioners um, agreed that different height limits could be appropriate in different parts of the downtown area. Then we also discussed reevaluating ground floor uses to help ensure that there's adequate space for retail, restaurant, and similar uses, or basically those that uh, could generate some sales tax revenue for the village. Um, and at that topic, was one where commissioners did have um, differing opinions on this. Some thought that office and surface uses should be limited to upper floors and others felt that um, it was suitable for the first floor uses and that the current restrictions were adequate. And I think one of the things that was considered in this also was the fact that the inventory of buildings in the downtown area typically are not elevator buildings, and so these second floor uses are accessible only um, in most all buildings by, um, by stairs. So it was something that the commissioners talked about. The discussion's not over, certainly, and it will be continued to be discussed um, at the next meeting. Finally, the commission um, discussed issues with bicycle and pedestrian access to downtown and potential street, streetscape improvements for the downtown area. We will be continuing these discussions on November 8th at our next meeting, and we'll also start to discuss the highway frontage district. Thanks for that report. Next report is the Golf Advisory Committee and our representative on that is Trustee Hallway. Thank you. The Golf Advisory Committee met last Monday, and the, we discussed, uh, the, the biggest discussion was, well, I guess we'll start with performance. Uh, and September was another another wonderful month, another wonderful month for weather, which correlates well to to a lot of play. So budget was over by $85,000. Uh, a good chunk of the meeting was spent on the 2024 draft budget, similar to what Trustee Rubin said, discussed a lot of different things, including inflation, but also payroll and expenses and revenues. and after a lengthy discussion, the, the committee unanimously approved the 2024 draft budget. The ad hoc design uh, re review committee was presented and is an update for, for this uh, for this meeting. There have been three, meeting, uh, three meetings re reviewing the exterior design. And the committee has chosen to move forward with a prairie style design um, FGM Architects is producing two different concepts of a prairie-style design for the new community clubhouse, and the design for this uh, will all be reviewed this Monday. Uh, in this room, I believe, right, we're going to hold this, uh, October 23rd at 6 p.m. Everybody's invited to attend. The, the renderings are on the Village website, so you can see them ahead of Monday, but please those who are interested, we welcome everybody to attend Monday at 6 o'clock right here. Thanks for that report. Next report is the Sustainability Task Force. Uh, Trustee Nidalopoulos is our representative on that. We haven't heard enough about sustainability this evening, so have it. University and 
and Hannah Cohen, who teaches astronomy and other science courses at the Thanks for that report. Next, a uh, report on the Council for Inclusion and Community, uh, Trustee Scott. Thank you. The Glencoe Council for Inclusion and Community met on October 11th, and we discussed current initiatives and events, in particular the belonging event being held in partnership with District 35 this evening. So shout out to West School, uh, where good things are happening. Um, we then focused our attention on a new committee structure in order to streamline our efforts. Uh, the proposed new committees discussed are the Community Relations Subcommittee, uh, and they are tasked with being responsive to our community partners, such as the Public Library, the Writers' Theater, District 35, Nature Transition, etc. cetera. Uh, second committee, Communications Subcommittee, highlighting diversity, equity, and inclusion in our community. Uh, the Events Subcommittee, um, and they would be tasked with the coordination of any events, either in partnership with the village or potential new events uh, on behalf of the council. And finally, um, the very awkwardly titled Integrating Community Feedback Subcommittee, uh, tasked with soliciting the community's feedback and integrating it into our plans moving forward. So, uh, took up the sum of our meeting. Thank you. Thanks for that report. You can work on the title for that group. Uh, maybe you don't have enough time to fix that one. The last report is the Preservation Commission. Our representative on that is Trustee Arthur Duncan. Thank you. <clears throat> the Preservation Commission met on October 3rd. Uh, at that meeting, architects Roberto Bias and Fred Wilson, along with Michael Winnick, the owner of the property at 690 Longwood, requested a voluntary advisory review of a proposed renovation to this existing historic local landmark. <clears throat> they coped to keep as much of the home as possible while updating the exterior. The commission supported efforts to reuse materials and to keep the existing building envelope. However, the commission also was commented that the proposed front exterior would be radically changed from, his, from its historic roots, resulting in the probable loss of the original character and landmark status. Under the present zoning, the owner is free to pres preserve the front facade rehabilitate the building or pursue a new structure depending on his vi vision uh, for the project. It's not often that residents volunteer to seek the advice of the commission and the commission is pleased to help the owner explore uh, the possibilities. <clears throat> um, at this time, no final decision has been made. Um, updates were also provided on possible fee adjustments for historic properties and new zoning provisions for historic properties. Preservation Chair Van Vetchen and Zoning Chair Novak are working toward a joint meeting of the two commissions to discuss zoning variations and or bonus provisions for historic properties. I believe this is scheduled for Monday, November 6, 2023. No demolition permits were received and of course, um, the next meeting of the Preservation Commission will be with the Zoning Board on November 6th. Thanks for that report. That concludes the committee report. Next slide. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll just run through a few items uh, this evening uh, as updates. Um, starting with our leaf collection program, the village's annual curbside leaf collection program be begins this coming Monday. Uh, October 23rd. I don't know if it's me. Great. Uh, we'll be this coming Monday, October 23rd. We've got a great deal of information on the program, including a collection map and other details that uh, have been loaded to the village's website, which is always a good spot to find information. An important reminder, leaves should be left on parkway areas rather than raked into the streets. When we rake leaves into the streets, streets tend to flood when it rains. So please do give us a, a hand and leave those leaves on the, the grassy areas and not on, uh, on the street. 
Uh, we will begin, as I said, um, moving through town with the methodology uh, starting Monday, and that program lasts at least five weeks. Um, Halloween, just a quick note that Halloween's Tuesday, October 31st. Trick-or-treating hours are between 4 and 8 p.m. on that Tuesday. Uh, we've got, again, on the Village's website, a number of safety tips. Uh, the Chamber's annual Halloween Hello takes place in downtown on Halloween this year, rather than the Friday prior, and that will be from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, encourage folks to stop by the Village Hall. We will again be decorating our central interior hallway. Uh, I understand there's a costume contest. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, but I apparently am participating. It will be, well, the staff will be in costumes uh, and we'll encourage children from the community to stop by and make fun of us or giggle uh, or be scared. I'm not sure. Um, one quick reminder, don't throw the jack-o'-lantern out after Halloween. Uh, there, we, the Glencoe Community Garden is partnering with the village again um, for an annual pumpkin smash composting event, which is Saturday, November 4th. I believe it's from 10 a.m. to noon. We'll have more information about that soon, uh, if it's not already up on the website. Trustee Rubin mentioned a great deal about the coming uh, calendar year 2024 budget, but just a rundown of some dates again. Uh, for those of you taking notes, uh, we will be presenting that draft budget at the Finance Committee meeting beginning at 5 p.m. on November 14th. That, two, that is a Tuesday. Uh, that's for the fiscal year that begins January 1st. We will post the budget documents no later than Thursday, November 9th on the Village's website, so anybody who's interested in taking a look at that, we encourage you to do so. Any feedback that we get from the Village Board on the 14th of November will be integrated into the budget document, which will be presented for approval on December 21st, as late in December as this board meets. Um, so we will uh, have that information, uh, as I said, on the website. Um, uh, Trustee Rubin did mention the property tax levy public hearing on the November 16th agenda. Um, we will also be posting information and then um, the board will approve the tax levy at the December 21st board meeting as well, along with a series of other budget documents that uh, govern the uh, village's finances for the coming fiscal year. A couple of, just a couple of dates uh, I had meant to mention before. Um, uh, Director Laughrin's um, meet and greets in the community. So we have two scheduled in the coming few weeks. Uh, next Friday, October 27th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be at Hometown Coffee. Uh, just again, an opportunity to um, meet the new public safety director and uh, say hello. We will also have another one um, on Halloween uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. He will be in the Public Safety Bay. Um, it's, it's part of the Halloween Hello uh, Day. So hopefully uh, families and those who are enjoying Halloween Hello after school have a chance to stop by and uh, sit in a fire truck perhaps and also say hi to the new Public Safety Director. Um, with that, that's all I have for my report, unless there are any questions. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Village President's Report. This will be short. Um, uh, we are going to appoint, um, so I'll need a motion in a second for this. We're appointing Sean Lockridge as the official Village Marshal. Is there a motion? There's a second. Second. Moved and seconded to all in favor. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Public Safety Director Lockrim is our village marshal. Even though, even though he escaped, he can't escape this position. Okay, that takes care of the reports of officers. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes items that have been published online for the community. They've been reviewed by the board individually or together as part of our Committee of the Whole discussions. We don't think they warrant any further public discussion. Uh, one exception is item 6B, which due to an equity interest that uh, Trustee Scott has in one of the village vendors, will remove that item from the consent agenda and vote at it separately. That's simply to uh, respect so, is there a 
motion to remove item six b from the consent agenda and then approve the remainder of the consent agenda been moved and seconded uh, we need a roll call on this trustee hall wax yes trustee listener trustee Milopoulos, trustee underdog yes. trustee rubin yes. trustee scott consent agenda has been passed and that concludes our consent agenda vote Scott is heading for the hills, um, so we can do our one item on regular business, which is the August 2023 check register for the Village of Glencoe and the Glencoe Golf Club. Uh, that's been circulated. Is there a motion to approve the check register? There. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call. Trustee Hallwax. Yes. Trustee Listener. Trustee Mealopolis. Trustee Underdunk. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Motion carried. That concludes regular business. Uh, welcome back, Trustee Scott. Uh, is there any other business for uh, a motion to go into closed session? I don't see any. Uh, is there a motion to move into closed session pursuant to uh, Section 2C1 of the Open Meetings Act? There, it's been moved and seconded. We need a roll call. Trustee Hallwax. Yes. Trustee Listener. Yes. Trustee Mealopoulos, Trustee Underdunk, Trustee Rubin, yes. Trustee Scott. 